Hi, we're at the 36th Annual Gala of the National Italian American Foundation, and among the many dignitaries to be honored, we're looking forward to a visit from our President, Barack Obama. Buona sera, everyone. It is so wonderful to be with you tonight to celebrate our wonderful, rich culture and heritage. We're cherishing all that is Italian tonight, and we are grateful for you spending your time, particularly now, at this challenging economic moment that we all find ourselves in, with unemployment persisting in the United States and challenges over debt in Italy and throughout Europe, because we all know that it is times like these, challenging times, that we all must remember what's most important in our lives, our health, our family, our friends, being good to one another. We kick off tonight's program with a special dedication to the Italian-American community who dedicated their lives to saving others on that tragic day we all know, September 11, 2001. of those we lost on 9-11, you see the heroism and dedication and ultimately the sacrifice of many, many Italian Americans. And their sacrifice is not limited to that day. We know that all of those who put on the uniform each and every day take on the great risk that comes with this important work. I'm proud to lead a department, the Department of Homeland Security, that is home to some of our nation's finest professionals committed to keeping our homeland and our hometown safe and secure. We were created in the wake of the 9-11 attacks, and every day we strive to hold up the values that have made our nation great, dedication, vigilance, shared responsibility. The first 9-11 memorials outside the United States was built in Padua, Italy. Since it opened, it has served as a remembrance not only of those Italians and Italian-Americans who lost their lives on 9-11, but of the strong bonds between our two countries. The memorial is in the shape of an open book, and an imaginary line runs through the book's hinge or spine, connecting Padua with New York City, where so many Italians first arrived in this country. This year marks the 150th anniversary of the Italian unification. Fifty, 50 years ago, a new young president, President John F. Kennedy, in one of his earliest speeches, he marked the 100th anniversary of the unification of Italy. Fifty years later, a new young president of the United States, who is an inspiration to many and certainly a hope to the world, declared in a proclamation the 150th anniversary and the reunification of Italy. We are deeply honored tonight that President Obama is gracing us with his presence presence because he is a great president. We are happy that he's here for who he is, but also for who we are. Viva Italia! I am biased, but I think Nancy was one of the best speakers of the House this country ever had. She was no doubt the best Italian-American speaker of the House we ever had. And I believe that she will be the best speaker of the House again in 2013. Uh, so I am honored uh, to be here to celebrate uh, National Italian-American Heritage Month and to commemorate the 150th anniversary of Italian unification. Good to see so many 
Amici. Uh, I see many proud sons and daughters of the old country. Uh, I see a couple of dozen proud Italian-American members of Congress here tonight. Uh, let me offer a special welcome to the guests who join us from Italy this evening. <laughs> Italy is one of our strongest allies, uh, a fellow founding member of NATO. We look forward to our work together with them. Uh, and we're going to be uh, joining them next week at the G20 uh, to make a series of decisions that are going to be very important for the world economy. Uh, I've also made sure to keep close the advice of Italian-Americans by asking some of them to serve in my cabinet. And as Nancy mentioned, uh, we could not be prouder of Janet Napolitano, who is keeping us safe every single day. And my outstanding Secretary of Defense, Leon Panetta. And as was mentioned, even though she's not here this evening, Jill Biden is proud to come from a long line of Gia Copas. And so she sends her regards. Tonight, I think it's also important for us to honor the proud service of the countless Italian-Americans who have fought for this country since our founding and who wear the uniform today. From the Chief of Staff of the Army, General Ray Odierno, to a hero whom I was proud to bestow our nation's highest military decoration and was the first one uh, in a very long time to personally receive the Medal of Honor, Staff Sergeant Salvatore Junta. So in a sense, every American joins us in celebrating this anniversary of Italian unification. What would America be without the contributions of Italy and Italian Americans? What would we be without the daring voyages of Columbus and Verrazano and Vespucci? What would our science and technology be without not just Da Vinci and Galileo, but Fermi? What would movies and music be without the magic of Capra, Sinatra, or Sophia Loren, my favorite? <laughs> I'm just saying. What would this city be without the influence of Roman thought and architecture? The Picciarelli brothers, uh, their work on the Lincoln Memorial, uh, Rumidi's magnificent touch, on the Capitol, although I must say it might be nice uh, to know what our politics would like without the contribution of Machiavelli. Um, <laughs> that's been internalized a little too much here in Washington. <laughs> America would not be what it is today without the unique contributions and the uncommon pride of Italian Americans. And like so many other groups. As Nancy said, like so many other groups, the Italians came to America in search of opportunity. They came with little. Very few were wealthy. But they came with an unwavering faith in God, an unfailing commitment to family, and an unlikely hope in the possibilities of America. The belief that in this country, you could be prosperous, you could be free, you could think and talk and worship as you please. There's a place where you could make it if you try. And it wasn't always easy. Italians weren't always welcome. And when we think about today's immigrants, we have to remind ourselves that those of us who now feel comfortable in our American identity, that that wasn't always the case in the past. The opportunities our forebearers hoped for wasn't always within reach right away, but they did not wait for anybody to hand it to them. They built new lives for themselves, and at the same time, they ended up building an entire nation. They enriched our heritage and our culture with their own. They helped forge the very promise of this country that success is possible if you're willing to work for it. And those efforts built a better America for all of us. 
everybody in this room, just about, everybody has an ancestor or lots of ancestors who fit that story. Of parents who said, maybe I can't speak English, but I'll make sure my child can speak English. They might teach English someday. I might not have an education. I might not have an education, but I'm going to make sure my child has an education. I might perform backbreaking labor today, but someday my child can be a senator or a Supreme Court justice or a Speaker of the House or a Secretary in the Cabinet uh, or President of the United States. So that's what binds us together. That is what has always made our country unique. We've always been and we will always be a nation of immigrants from all over the world. And out of many, somehow we're able to forge ourselves into one people. And this is the place where the highest hopes can be reached and the deepest and, 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 and most sincere dreams can be made real. And that's the legacy our forebears left for us, and that's what we now have to leave to our children. These are tough times right now, and millions of Americans are hurting. Millions are without work, and those who have work are still all too often struggling to get by. And for many, the dream that brought so many Italian Americans to these shores feels like it's slipping away. So we've got work to do. But while these times are hard, we have to remind ourselves they're not as hard as those that earlier generations faced. And the legacy of their courage and their commitment and their determination and their generosity and their willingness to think about the next generation, we have to be just as passionate and just as selfless as they were to keep that dream alive and make sure our children inherit futures that are big and bright and that this country is as generous as it's always been. And that's what we have to commit to ourselves tonight. So on behalf of all Americans, I want to thank you for everything that the Italian-American community has done, everything that you've done to contribute to the chronicles and the character of the greatest nation on Earth. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, it is that time, the beginning of our awards presentations. A suit, a tie, and a smile. That's what Claudio Bozzo is all about. Hard work, focus, energy, and optimism. Bozzo was born in 1967 in Genoa, a seaport in northern Italy. In December 1992, Bozzo moved to the United States, and two years later, he joined the Mediterranean Shipping Company in New York. Initially employed as a clerk in the intermodal department, he worked his way up the ranks. After managing almost all departments of the company, he became the president of MSC USA in 2005 and has led them to prosperity ever since. In 2004, he was appointed Knight of the Italian Republic and was awarded Man of the Year in 2008 by the Italian Language Intercultural Alliance. The following year, he became the president of the Italy America Chamber of Commerce. This year, Pozzo was inducted in the UN International Maritime Hall of Fame and is one of the youngest presidents to receive this honor. The National Italian American Foundation is proud to present Claudio Bozzo with this special achievement award in international business. Incredible evening for me tonight. Can you imagine I can go back tomorrow and tell my friends that before me I had President Obama speak, then I had Mr. Versace and Emma Marcegaglia, and then there is Claudio Bozzo. Fantastic, that's very cool. <laughs> Every morning when I wake up, I thank God because uh, I owe really a lot, and I ask uh, in which way can I give back, and I ask that every morning, and I say, please make sure that my action match what I would like to do for you, and uh, uh, I don't know if I'm doing it, but I promise all of you that I'm really trying, and so I hope I'm going to be worth the award you're giving me. Thank you. You are behind the wheel of your car. Wherever you look, there is a piece of Naples excellence. Door panels, dashboards, and other components for the most popular cars in the world. Made by the Adler Group's companies based in Ottaviano in the province of Naples. The same place of origin of the Scudieri family. 
In 1992, Paolo Scudieri became CEO of the Adler Group, exploiting what he had learned from books and from working with his father as a young man. The Scudieri's Group has become a major worldwide operator. In the past three years, the Adler Group has grown to 1,200 employees in the U.S. marketplace, with a total workforce of 6,200 worldwide. Today, the group has 58 factories in 18 countries, seven research and development centers, with an annual turnover of 820 million euros. The goal is to achieve revenues of 1 billion euros within the next two years. The group is a supply and reference point for many major international car manufacturers. The National Italian American Foundation is proud to present Paolo Scudieri with the Special Achievement Award in International Business. I am proud of this achievement and I am proud to receive it from a foundation I really admire. It's a goal that uh, you reach just one life and uh, I am excited when I think about the famous people who were on the this chase before me in past edition. <laughs> In 2010, Emma Marchigalia topped the Financial Times' Top 50 Most Powerful Women in World Business as the only Italian on the list. She's the head of an empire which boasts 50 production plants worldwide and employs 7,000 people with an estimated annual turnover of $9 billion in 2013. In 2008, she was elected president of the Italian Employers Federation Confindustria. Over the last few years, the number of associate members has grown and today Confindustria represents almost 150,000 Italian enterprises. She is the first Italian woman to lead the main organization representing Italian manufacturing and service companies. The National Italian American Foundation is proud to present Emma Marchigalia with a Special Achievement Award in Women's Leadership. Many pioneering Italians immigrating to the United States and made a significant contribution to the growth and success of this nation. I think that this is one of these moments in history where we must work together to restore confidence, to create employment, and to return to growth. I think that business has a strong responsibility in doing that. So I accept your award on behalf of the Italian business as a symbol of our commitment to continuing to work for the good of our country and to strengthening the friendship that binds us together, I think forever and always most of also forever. Thank you. In 1977, Santo Versace, along with his brother Gianni, founded the Gianni Versace trademark. Santo played a leading role in establishing the exclusivity and profitability of the Versace brand. Today, Santo, along with his sister Donatella, have built the Versace empire into a worldwide luxury company, generating over $1 billion per year in retail sales and continue to lead the house of Versace into the future. His success in the business world has enabled him to help others. Santo Versace has been the president of Fondazione Operation Smile Italia Onless since January 2007. Operation Smile, through the help of dedicated medical volunteers, has provided more than 2 million patient evaluations and over 200,000 free surgeries for children and young adults born with cleft lips, cleft palates, and other facial deformities. He is a businessman extraordinaire, spreading his generosity with a smile. Ciao. Viva l'America, viva l'Italia, viva la Calabria. She was 19 when she received her degree from Stanford University. Since January 2009, she has been minority leader of the Ohio Senate. And in between, Capri Cafaro has demonstrated extreme dedication and leadership in achieving her goals regarding government and health care. We are slaves of the law in order that we may be able to be free. For those of us in public life, sometimes it seems like we are slaves to politics in order to make laws. But we must remember, we make policy, we create change in order for those we serve to be free. Thank you. Congressman Frank J. Guarini was born in Jersey City on August 20th, 1924. As a grandchild of hardworking immigrants from Catanzaro, Calabria and Campobasso, Molise,
Marini's love of learning landed him at Dartmouth College, pursuing a BA in political science. But his education was interrupted by World War II. He became part of the greatest generation. After joining the Navy and serving as navigator aboard the flagship of the Pacific Amphibious Fleet, the USS Mount McKinley, the warship was among the very first to enter Tokyo Bay. Guarini saw active combat and received the Naval Commendation Medal and three battle stars. Post-war, he resumed his studies and upon graduating Dartmouth, attended New York University Law School, receiving a JD and a Master of Law. He later studied at the Hague Academy of International Law in the Netherlands. Guarini's early career as a trial lawyer in New Jersey coincided with his co-authoring of the book, The New Jersey Rules of Evidence, which is updated annually and used in the New Jersey courts today. In 1966, he was elected to the New Jersey State Senate, where he spent two terms. In 1978, he was elected to the United States Congress, where he remained a powerful influence over seven terms. His career serving the nation was marked by a commitment to fiscal responsibility, reducing government spending, and protecting American jobs. He championed fair trade policies, education, and worked tirelessly on the war on drugs. In 1994, Frank Guarini had the great honor of being appointed by President Bill Clinton to represent the United States in the General Assembly of the United Nations. Retired from public service, he began a career anew and flourished as a real estate developer. He helped transform Jersey City's vacant rail yards along the Hudson waterfront into towering residential and commercial complexes, forever altering the skyline. Throughout his life, Guarini made time to give back by serving on many prominent civic boards, including the National American Red Cross and the National Italian American Foundation, where he served over two decades as president and chairman. I'm humbled by the great turnout that we have. Many of you have given much of your time, and these are your roots, and we're your people working in your behalf, developing a still stronger program for Italian Americans here in our country. But the real heroes are our forebearers, the people who came before us. They made the sacrifices and found their way and developed a life in a new land. And they believed in education and they developed a base for us to succeed. And we will take NIAF to a higher level, and we will work together to build still a greater foundation. Thank you, and God bless all of you. Dion, street poet and singer of extraordinary versatility, range and resonance, defined rock and roll for a generation. Dion DeMucci's mastery of music began at a very early age on the mean streets of the Bronx. R&B, blues, doo and rock and roll all influenced his approach to music. It's really black music filtered through an Italian neighborhood. It comes out with an attitude like, yo. In 1957, he brought the best of the neighborhood rockers together to form Dion and the Belmonts, named after Belmont Avenue in the heart of the Bronx. I Wonder Why was Dion and the Belmont's first hit, and over the next two years, the group earned a reputation not only for topping the charts, but for creating some of the most vital and exciting doo-wop music on the American scene. Why must I be a teenager in love? With songs such as A Teenager in Love and Where or When, Dion and the Belmont's earned their place in the history books. During the following 15 years, Dion recorded a series of gospel albums that reflected an enduring faith in God and was nominated for a Grammy in 1985. His induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame further highlighted Dion's contribution to the state of the musical art, setting the stage for his active return to recording with Yo Frankie, showcasing the inexhaustible creativity and sheer exuberance that has made him one of music's most authentic legends. You know, I was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 89, and it was, it was just wonderful. I mean, it was an amazing night. But this here, this here is just, uh, you know, this here is just, it's just so personal. It's, it's my DNA. It's, it's in my bones, you know. The family, the food, the music, the songs, the history, the art. The poetry, the architecture, the faith, 
How about the honesty and beauty in Italian films? God. The church. I'm talking about real Italians, not HBO Italians. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, everybody's mentioned their grandfather. I have to mention my grandfather, Tony, who came here from Bade in 1907. I think he was 16 years old. He used to uh, take me to the southernmost point of Manhattan, because we lived in the Bronx. And, and he would point at the Statue of Liberty, and he'd say, Dion, that's the Statue of Liberty. And they should, maybe on the West Coast, near California, they should erect the Statue of Responsibility. Because <laughs> with great freedom and power and liberty comes great responsibility, he'd say to me. From the very beginning, Frank G. Mancuso Sr. had an incredible fascination with the movies. He worked as an usher at the Lafayette Theater in Buffalo, New York at 15. And after four decades of work in the entertainment and communication industry, he has become chairman and CEO of some of the industry's most successful movie studios. After serving in the Army for two years, Mancuso worked for the Basil Brothers and began booking movies for their theaters in New York and Pennsylvania. Paramount Pictures, one of the studios he was doing business with, was impressed with his work and hired him. 20 years later, he became chairman and CEO of Paramount Studios. Under his guidance at Paramount, Mancuso partnered with MCA Universal to build the USA Cable Network into one of the most watched cable networks in the country. He also established Paramount Broadcast Group and United Cinemas International in conjunction with MCA, with theaters in England, Scotland, Ireland, Germany, and Spain. In 1993, he led Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer Studios as chairman and CEO. In his seven years at MGM, he revived the studio, leading them to great commercial success with such films as Stargate, Species, Get Shorty, Leaving Las Vegas, The Birdcage, Ronin, and The Thomas Crown Affair. His ongoing dedication and passion for the movies continues to inspire, captivate, and entertain viewers all over the world. Life's journey is uh, seldom traveled successfully alone. There are many of my colleagues here from Paramount and MGM, and to them I want to say thank you for all that we achieved together. I've had an incredible career in life. Uh, in my personal life, I've often been asked, how did you manage to have an entire career in Hollywood by having a wife, a girlfriend, and a main squeeze, all the same lady? <laughs> I said, <laughs> I usually said, believe me, it wasn't easy. <laughs> but then again, in over 50 years that Faye and I have been married and built a life, a family, a career together, we had the blessing to have parents who are role models, Mary and George Mancuso and Ann and Sam Morrow. They led, we followed. So thank you all for being here tonight to celebrate all these wonderful achievements of all these great Italian, Italian-Americans. When we leave here, let's celebrate and continue to celebrate everything that is Italian. But more importantly, let us honor the country where we live that allows us to gather on a night like this to celebrate our ancestry. Thank you very much.